Hello everyone, look what have I created. Procedural map. I'll tell you how you can create it step by step. To begin with, I'm going to tell you about the wave function collapse algorithm. It's a special algorithm to solve block placement. It looks similar to this task. It's generally used to create procedural maps, like one you have seen before. The idea is simple, you have a 3D matrix or 2D dimensional matrix. What is a matrix? Matrix is a rectangular array. You can make a matrix of any dimension. You need a matrix to represent sockets for your blocks or tiles. Then you pick a random position and place a desirable block in it. Here the algorithm starts to do his work. It updates the full matrix and removes blocks which you cannot place near already placed blocks. It stops updating when updates do nothing. Then it finds a position in the matrix with lowest possible blocks available and places block at the position from the list. This process repeats until every space in the matrix will only contain one block. Yep, the idea is super simple. However, it is incredibly slow. Why don't we just try to place blocks immediately? Adam, I'll tell you why. Actually, you can do that with more work for a 3D dimensional matrix. Look at the photo. You can make a huge map, 100 by 100, just fitting blocks immediately. If everything is so good, why do we need wave function collapse? That's a good question, Adam. The most epic thing about the wave function collapse algorithm is that it doesn't need every block type and many rules to solve the matrix. How is that possible? Let me explain. When you fill blocks immediately, you must have enough rules to solve your matrix in any occasion, or you must have all block types to solve your matrix with your given rules. When the task is simple and you have only slopes, corners, inner corners, and planes, you don't need a lot of rules to fill everything perfectly. But what if I need something more complex? Let's add another condition. Blocks must connect with the blocks of the same color, like this. And that's the end of filling blocks immediately. Why? Just add more rules. It doesn't work. You will always make mistakes and holes because you will need rules to solve all possible position placements of blocks. And adding just one color gives you a lot of new possible outcomes, because you will have blocks with two colors on it to make a transition between colors. How many rules and blocks do you need? Which shapes of colors transition must be to solve everything correctly? Furthermore, you need more and more rules to solve this task as the number of blocks will increase. Look how many blocks I have created and it is still not enough. So it will quickly become a disaster. How can we solve this? Here comes the wave function collapse algorithm. It doesn't care about the missing blocks and rules. It just solves your task with the given rules and blocks. If the matrix can be solved with your specific blocks, it won't use them. If your rules are wrong, it doesn't matter. It will solve the matrix, but only with blocks fitting the rules. Isn't that cool? So, we have a clean small conclusion now. If you need something simple, just place blocks immediately, and you will save a lot of time. And then, if you need something complex, like procedural maps with different biomes, use wave function collapse. Now, the most important question about wave function collapse. Can I speed it up a little? Yes, we can by using a little bit of logic. First, create the rules for placing blocks. The more rules we have, the faster we will find suitable blocks to place. How to do that? In my case, I use 3D dimension space and the tiles in the shape of cube to fill my map. So cubes have six sides. I created rules to check for six sides when placing my blocks. By the way, I have biomes like this. And biomes are just another color. Adding rules to check for colors for six sides. Then to change biomes, I need blocks shifters. It's a special block with two colors on it. To use shifters, I need to add another four rules to check diagonals, horizontal diagonal. Only these four edges. Finally, I need two more rules to save my map from breaking. Checking blocks above and below, so it won't be able to place blocks on top of each other. And checking for top and bottom will look like a pyramid. Look, these rules can be used for both algorithms, placing immediately and when function collapse but the first one will only work without biomes. Now, the part where the wave function collapse algorithm updates the full matrix. However, 
Updating every position of a matrix is unbelievably slow. You will get old trying to solve a map 3 by 5 by 5. So how to know which position we need to update in the matrix? Do you remember the rule update matrix until it updates? Forget it. It is slow. We will only update it once. A little bit later I will tell you how we are going to deal with errors because of that. To make a smart matrix update we must look at our rules. These rules are the key to smart updates. Ok, the block has 6 sides. Let's update the matrix in these 6 directions from the previously placed blocks. And we will stop updating each line when it isn't updating anything, because updating the line further is useless. Don't forget about diagonal rules. That's why we add diagonal horizontal lines. Finally, the pyramid updates to top and to the bottom. That is a smart update. Although it almost always solves them up, sometimes it gives an error. How to deal with errors? Sometimes it can place blocks in unsolvable position, that is why the algorithm will make places in the matrix with zero possible blocks to be placed near them. For example, a slope with a slope under it. Now you can place nothing near them. The solution is pretty simple. When you find a position in a matrix with zero possible blocks to place, you just have to reset the matrix locally. In my case, I need to reset items in pyramid shape to the bottom and to the top of the matrix. This is it. Now it solves every time and fast. I know, I know, it only works for my blocks and my rules, but that is why it works faster. Now, when we have procedural map generation script, we need a beautiful blocks to fill them up with, because it feels so empty here. Using Blender and add-on Buildify, I have created buildings for my created tiles. It is not hard if you know the basic rules of 3D modeling and texture painting. I have a tip for you, if you want to make a seamless texture between models. In UV map, make square walls fill the whole UV tile. Like this. After we created models, just use the add-on and it will create these cool buildings for you. It is not the perfect tool, because you have to clean up after but it is a really useful one. Now it is time to paint them. You can do it in the blender, but I strongly recommend you to use Substance Painter because it will save you your time. Load your models and make some texture variations and you are done. Second step is to make smooth ground because blocky ground is ugly. Now the important thing. If you want your tiles to look seamless, you must make normals of boundary faces coplanar. What does it mean? Make your boundary faces be in one plane space. I didn't get it. It will be correct when you connect faces together of two tiles they will look the same, with shade smooth and without it. You shouldn't see a seam edge between ground tiles. Got it? Whatever. You should just google how shade smooth works and you'll understand why it works like that. Teacher, I still didn't get it. Adam, just shut up or I will hit you with a rocket. Good, let me continue. Next step, fill your tiles with any models you want. I was creating a city, so I have created a bunch of road models and city props like benches, traffic lights, fences, street lights and trash bins. I think it is enough props by now. After a long time assembling everything together, I was hit by another problem. My game was unoptimized. I didn't have any lots on my props. So I quickly created fake houses and baked textures. They look like houses from far away, so the load model in Unity swaps high-res models to low-res models when you are far away from them. Super useful. Also, I made lots for my spiders using a magic modifier called Decimate in Blender. It collapses geometry reducing the number of polygons, but textures don't stretch too much if you are careful with it. Look. Pretty unnoticeable if you are far away. We are finished with the set preparation phase. Now everything isn't laggy and works fine. To make some objects with physics, we have to make some optimization. We only want items to form near the player. We need a special script for that. So we add an if statement to check whether the player is nearer than it activates the rigid body. Easy solution for a big performance boost. Did you use trigger colorizers to make this work? Yes, I did, Adam. 
But why haven't you said anything about these colliders? Adam, do you remember what I have said to you about asking too many questions? Yes, teacher. Okay. Another thing is that it is really hard to create a lot of the same performs with different materials in Unity. That's why I have written a script to change materials for me. It changes material by name. If you use it, don't worry about errors in Unity with the, with the script. The script works. By the way, I tried to use a static batching system to assemble static objects, but it doesn't work. As Unity assembles them by itself if you create objects during the start function. Then I fixed bugs and all the errors and adjust everything to be better as you can see. This is the final variant by now. After all of that, I've been hit by another huge roadblock. I need grass, but I can't just place perfabs of grass as it is time consuming and performance unfriendly. I have to use grass using shaders. But all available free shaders don't work with HDRP. Oh no, I skip this problem for later. It's worth another lesson. I think you all learned a lot today. Teacher. What? I'm sorry, but I didn't get it. What do you mean? You said that it will be step by step, but it isn't. Can you repeat everything again, step by step? Adam, you son of a...